Hello, hello, my name is Sophia and this is the walkthrough to OSINT exercise 020. We just need to find it first. On my website, you can find a number of OSINT exercises to practice your skills. If you have not attempted to solve this one yet, you can find the link to my list of OSINT exercises in the description and give it a go first. If you're here because you have found and completed, well done, you should be very proud. If you're here because you got a bit lost, I hope you find this video useful. Right, let's do this. Let's find this exercise. And for that, we need to start somewhere. So let's start with where you would find all my other exercises, the list of OSINT exercises. So you can scroll all the way down. There's a lot of text you can read about it. So there's the list of exercises and you can see how they're ordered by number. And if you open a few random ones, let's open three, six, nine. Here we go. So you can open them and you can see how the URL follows the same structure. Structure. There's the same naming system. You have kralix.com slash list of OSINT exercises with hyphens instead of spaces slash OSINT hyphen exercise hyphen three digit number. And you can see this one is 003, this one is 006, and this one is 009. So it would make sense that number 20 would follow the same pattern. And we can just test it. So instead, we're going to remove the 09 and put 20. And oh, not what we're expecting. Huh? It's all part of the plan, though. We're going somewhere with this. So the text at the top of the page says, oops, that page can't be found. I swear it was here a second ago. There's an image of a distraught woman in front of a computer, which I feel like resembles me after attempting to geolocate something for two hours and getting nowhere. She seems to be thinking about time. Underneath the image, you can read a sentence which says, what now you are so close. The second dot here has a hyperlink. It leads to an image. I just want to clarify that the image will not help you find this exercise page at all. It's just a bit of an Easter egg. It's the picture that I was going to have on this page instead of the one with the woman, but I decided against it because I thought perhaps people would not get the reference and be a bit confused by it. I don't know. But nevertheless, I still wanted to have the image somewhere within the page. And here it is. Get ready for this. It says, so close, I can almost taste it. It's a scene from a SpongeBob episode. I felt it was hilarious, but then I thought to myself, is this inappropriate? To which a voice in my head answered, no, this is Patrick. <laughs> I just laugh at my own jokes. I hope you found it amusing as well. But anyway, let's just go back to the previous page. Here we go. And it still does not appear to contain the actual exercise. However, just because it does not have the exercise now, it does not mean it didn't at some point because I swear it was here a second ago. So let's go back in time. See what I did there? Okay, so how do we go back in time? We're going to use one of the most important tools for an OSINT analyst. So let's just bring it here we go, the Wayback Machine. Whether you are archiving the contents of a web page or want to access information that is no longer available, the Wayback Machine is your best friend. It was created in 1996 by the Internet Archive, so this is where we are now, a non-profit organization, and it aims to capture and preserve snapshots of websites and their contents from different points in time. It's amazing and you should get familiarized with it. At the top, here you go, you'll enter the URL you want to check. So let's check out the page where the OSINT exercise should be located, which I have copied here. So remember, it was gradix.com slash list of OSINT exercises with hyphens in between slash OSINT exercise 020. And let's check it out. And look at that, we have a hit. Apparently, someone archived this page. It was me, I did it. You're welcome. When you click on it, so you can either click here because you just saved one time or you click on the dot here. Let's just open on a new tab. You can see how the web page looked like on this specific date and time. Here you go. It was archived on August 28, 2023. And here we have it, OSINT exercise 020. We found it. First task complete. Well done. You have found it. So welcome to the rest of OSINT exercise 020, task briefing. The internet is a digital ecosystem in constant transformation. Websites change appearance, domains change owners, businesses open and close and accounts are created and deleted. In July 2023, x.com went from being an almost blank page to redirecting to twitter.com. Your task is to go back in time until the year 2000 and find the following information within the x.com website. 
B. So second question. The frequently asked questions page and C, the list of members of the management team in July. So both of them on the x.com website in the year 2000. This one specifically in July because it has changed a few times. I've marked this exercise level as beginners, perhaps medium. I'm not sure how comfortable you are with the Wayback Machine. For experts, it should be easy, should very, very definitely be easy. You should be very used to this. So let's do this. We already know how to use the Wayback Machine. So now instead of having this page here, I'm going to open a new tab because I fear we're going to end up with a lot of tabs and x.com. Here we go. So as you have seen before, you're presented with a timeline at the top and a calendar underneath it. The dots on the calendar indicate when this specific URL got crawled and there was an attempt to archive it. Blue indicate there was no issues with the archiving. Green means it encountered a redirect status code. Using the calendar and the color of the dots, you can pinpoint in time when x.com went from just having an X on a blank page to redirecting to twitter.com and I'm going to show you. So you can see there's a lot of redirecting here and you see here July, there's a lot of snapshots, 59 on just this day. And if you go back, there is one blue and there is one green following it and we're going to check it out. So between this time, x.com went from an X on a blank page to here you go, redirecting to twitter.com. You can get some pretty cool information by just looking at the colors of dots and where they lead. We're not here to check out 2023. We want to go back in time to the year 2000. So let's just close that. It's not relevant to us. So for that, we're going to go there and click on the 2000, year 2000. And then you can see all the snapshots that happened on year 2000. And if you remember our first task, technically our second task is to find the frequently asked questions page. So we can just check out available snapshots of x.com and just click a random one. I don't know, I'm going to click the April one. Why not? So there's one in April. Let's see how x.com look like in the year 2000. So here we go. It was banking and investment. There was a website and look at that. Very useful. There is a frequently asked questions page FAQ. Let's click on it. New tab. And oh no, we have an error page not found. Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> it's not a surprise. I knew that obviously. I'm going to click another one. Let's go with May. Why not? There's four snapshots, five something AM. And there's another FAQ. There's several of them. Let's click this one. Can we check out? Does it have anything? It does not. Oh no. <laughs> I can already tell you that it will happen with every single snapshot on the 2000 calendar. Where is it? I already lost it. Here we go. All of them will have exactly the same problem. You'll get a page not found error. You're welcome. You cannot have this being too easy, can we? What's the fun in that? Okay. So if you keep clicking around, you quickly come to realization that at some point in 2000, the front page of this website changes. And from August onwards, so I'll get this on the 15th of August, which is the first option that we have in August. There is not even going to be an FAQ link available. So it's gone. It's not even here anymore. So what now? How can we find the contents of the FAQ page when none of the options available on the calendar show the page properly? And this is why it's so important to fully understand the tools at your disposal. The majority of users of the Wayback Machine will simply use the calendar and be done with it. Fair enough. Most of the times that's all you need, but not now we need more. So I'm going to start closing things because otherwise I'm going to get very lost. It's a lot of it. Okay. Back to the calendar and I'm going to show you, see how at the top there's a few options. There's a few sections. We're on the calendar one is here. It's highlighted, but there's others. I will leave you to explore all the rest on your own time. For now, we're going to jump straight to the sitemap, which I will open on a new tab again. Brilliant. It has a bit of an explanation. It says here, this sitemap feature groups all the archives we have for websites by year. So you can see the calendar here, then builds a visual sitemap. Here we go in the form of a radial tree graph for each year. So if you click it, all the years have it's just slightly different depending on whatever was happening that year. The center of the circle is the root of the website and successive rings moving out from the center present pages from the site. So you can see how the links are changing there as I move it. 
as you roll over the rings and cells, note the corresponding URL, change at the top, I've said that already, and you can click on any. So if you click, you'll go to the page that it says there in blue. Great, so that's it. Let's just go back to the year 2000 again, because that's what we're interested in. If you look at the names of the pages here, you realize that they're ordered alphabetically. So you can see there was an E, there was a B before that, A, B, E and so on. Which means that if we want to find the frequently asked questions page, we can try to go to F and hope for the best. So there's an E and where's more help? Oh, there's an H and look at that. What can we see there? It says help underscore FAQ.htm. Brilliant. I'm clicking on it because I like to click everything. And here we are. Look at that. Looks beautiful. The full FAQ page of x.com. You can scroll and read it if you're interested in a bit of history. And here we go. All the way there. All the way up. All of it in front of you. It's no longer page not found. We have found it. You can also see at the top how he claims he was archived in June 18, 2000, which is interesting enough. If you go back to the calendar, wherever I left it, here we go. You quickly realize that there's nothing on June 18. Look at that. There is nothing there. It just means that x.com was not archived on June 18, but this specific page, so the x.com slash help underscore faq.htm was archived on this date, which is something that can happen and why it's so important to check the other features of the Wayback Machine. So our second task is complete. We managed to get access to x.com FAQ page from the year 2000. Brilliant. That was easy. I hope it was easy. Let's go back to the exercise task briefing. For our third and final task, we need to find the list of members of the management team in July specifically. This is quite an easy request since it can also be found using the same technique we just used. But I want to take the opportunity to show you another feature of the Wayback Machine, which will make this much faster. So let's go back again and we're going to check this time the URLs feature. Let's click on it. For a domain as big and old as x.com, there will be a huge list of URLs on this list. Look at that. More than 10,000 URLs have been captured by this URL prefix. But this is a searchable database and it's so, so useful because you can order by various categories. But the best feature is the fact that you can filter the results. Look at that. You can just type things here. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the list of members of the management team in July. So let's try search for something like management. So like management. Here we go. Bam. Right in front of us. Brilliant. x.com port 80 about management.htm captured seven times. Here you go. Let me put my little colorful thing. Seven times between March 2nd here and July 6, 2000. Let's click it. So you can click it as well. It's going to open a new tab. And you can see how now we're back at looking at the calendar. But this time on this specific URL that we didn't even know existed until now, the management web page. There's one good snapshot from July 6, which is exactly what we're looking for. As a side note, the orange dot, you can see one and you can see two here, indicate that the URL was not found and there was a client side error during the attempt to crawl and archive this specific page. We can just ignore these two because they're not going to give us anything. So let's do this. Let's click on the July 6, 2000 link to check out the list of members of the management team. And here they are, the full list with information about each one, starting with Elon Musk, who was apparently the president and chief executive and founder of X.com, which is a slightly naughty thing to say because X.com was not founded in 1999. You can go as back as 1996. But that's Elon Musk for you. As I have mentioned earlier, you could also reach this page by using the sitemap feature. So remember how you use this one. You can also find it. It's there about management. But interestingly enough, you cannot do the other way around. So let's try to go back. Here we go. We have x.com again. Let's go back to the 2000 like we were and the URL. And instead of management, we're going to look for things like help because we know it was called help uh, underscore FAQ and you get a lot of results. But if you look at the dates here, you'll see that not a single one is from the year 2000. And instead, if you put 
FAQ, again, 2014, 11, etc. If you would try to write frequently asked questions, you get a few results, none of them from the year 2000. And that is why I wanted to showcase the various ways of doing it. So you have the calendar, you have the sitemap, you have the URL, you can test all of them and more. There's a lot of ways to do this. I will advise everyone to explore this website even further. Don't stick to the obvious or the easy. Keep pushing and see how much you can find using the features available at your disposal. And that's it. We have completed all tasks of OSINT exercise 020. First, we found the actual exercise page using the Wayback Machine. Then we used the sitemap feature to find the frequently asked questions page. And finally, we used the URLs feature to find the list of members of the management team in July 2000. I hope you enjoyed the exercise. I hope you learned a few things. Perhaps you could consider donating to the archive project, here we go, which allows us to keep traveling back to the past of the internet. Thank you for listening and for the continuous support after 20 exercises and dozens, dozens of tasks. Thank you again. Have a great day.